Donald Trump won by eight points in 2020. Democrats have been rushing to get similar constitutional amendments on the ballot in a number of battleground states with an added goal of boosting President Biden's chances for reelection. Right now, abortion is winning Democratic elections, even in red states. And history suggests popular ballot questions can make a difference at the top of the ticket as well. In May of 2004, Massachusetts became the first state to recognize same-sex marriage, prompting swift backlash from the right. That November, 11 states held referenda seeking to ban same-sex marriage, while George W. Bush and John Kerry were in a dead heat at the top of the ballot. The measures passed overwhelmingly in all 11 states, while simultaneously driving up voter turnout. The state with the biggest increase in turnout? was Ohio, jumping about 10 points. And Ohio was crucial for George Bush, but it wasn't a given that he'd win it. The polls painted Ohio as a coin toss, but the referendum drove up voter turnout in rural parts of the states and pushed Bush across the finish line. It proved pivotal. Had John Kerry won Ohio, he would have had 270 electoral votes he would have needed to unseat the president. And even at the time, people saw the referendum was the thing that tipped the scale. Here's the New York Times in 2004. The ballot measures also appear to have acted like magnets for thousands of socially conservative voters in rural and suburban communities who might not otherwise have voted. Even in this heated campaign and in tight races, those voters who historically have leaned heavily Republican may have tipped the balance, end quote. This is 2004. So the strategy has precedent, but the question is, can it work in reverse next year and help Joe Biden stay in office against a challenger whose party is pushing deeply unpopular anti-abortion policies? For more on this, I'm joined by Molly Jong Fast, special correspondent for Vanity Fair and host of the wonderful Fast Politics podcast. Dino Badala is an attorney. He's the host of the Dino Badala show on Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and he's a columnist for the MSNBC Daily Newsletter. Love having you both. Thank you uh, for sure. being here. So we, we saw what happened in 2004. It did work. These things do drive people out. Now you hear Rick Santorum saying, and others have said it, don't put these specific questions out there. That's pure democracy. Pure democracy is <laughs> right. a bad idea right. because now everybody's going to, young people are going to come out and vote. Women are going to vote for their rights. <laughs> Parents are going to vote against book banning. Uh, tell me what you think. This is, th th this thing does seem to be working. Every one of these uh, abortion referendums, doesn't matter who put them up, abortion rights have won. Yeah. Look, democ Democrats have wildly popular policies, right? Choice is wildly popular, and we're seeing firsthand why they overturned Roe v. Wade in 19... Why Roe v. Wade happened in 1973. Because doctors are afraid to treat, maternal yep. mort mortality is going up, we're seeing these horror stories, we're seeing the 12-year-old girls. And so I think this is a wildly popular... Just like, by the way, the legalization of marijuana is wildly popular. These ideas, which are the ideas that Democrats are trying to enact, these ideas are popular. And so Republicans are starting to be really scared because they're losing in these ballot initiatives. And then you see things like Rick Santorum saying the quiet part out loud. Right, right. And, and this is the thing, Dean, that's interesting to me is that the preservation of abortion rights seems to be more popular than abortion. Right. The, the preservation of being parents being able to actually choose what their children read is, is, is more popular than, oh, this is lewd and it's going to make my kid gay or something like that. The, the people, Americans seem to be standing up for democracy and for rights at the moment. I, I agree with you. And in 1992, we all remember Jim Carville said, it's the economy stupid to Bill Clinton as a candidate, to make him focus on the economy, even put a sign up in the headquarters. The Biden team needs to do the same thing. It's the abortion stupid. In fact, after that, it's the democracy stupid. Even in polls that the New York Times pulled over the weekend that showed Biden trailing, it still showed Americans solidly approved Biden's handling of abortion and democracy. Those issues are intertwined to me. It's about self-determination. It's self-determination for a woman to choose her own destiny, self-determination for the rest of us to be able to vote, right. or an academic freedom intertwined with democracy. It's, again, about having rights to read the books you want, do what you want with your, your body. I think what Republicans miss, they view abortion as a political issue. It's the most personal issue that could be. 
You're forcing a woman to carry a fetus to term because your religion says that, right. and you're making your religion the law of this land. Right. And as Muslims, we yeah, know, we, how, we know we, how that goes. We, right. we, they told us forever, you can't have Sharia. We don't want Sharia law. But you're doing it from your right-wing right right. evangelical right. point of view. Right. Same thing, people don't like it. Right. It's also government overreach, right? Yes. Like, these are the small party of small government yeah. wants to make What's sure. What's going on there? Well, they're just, there's no intellectual honesty yeah. in this party, right? They just want what they want. They want to make you carry a dead fetus to term. They want to make your kid not be able to read a book, but they also want to not fund, you know, pre-K. I mean, no. there's no intellectual honesty. There's no consistency. And at this point, it's just a party of, like, this guy with 91 criminal indictment, criminal counts. Let's talk about uh, the, the polling uh, mm -hmm. that came out the other day. Now, interestingly enough, lots of people talked about the polling, but then there was an election the next mm -hmm. day. And this seems to happen sometimes, that there's polling and there's an election that says something different. But this keeps concentrating around uh, Joe Biden and about his, the, the intractability of some of his popularity numbers. And things go to his age. Uh, the, the governor of Illinois, uh, Pritzker, yeah. made a comment a few weeks ago, and he said Republicans should lean into it. They should sit there and say, in the last 45 years, Donald Trump has become a, a, a bitter, small, vindictive, ruthless, uh, fraudulent man, while Joe Biden has become empathetic and right. kind and, and worldly and all of these things. What do you make of the difference between the polls and the votes? Look, you know, again, these polls are small. They're people who pick up their cell phones, 3,000 people. This last poll was in six states. Those are the states that Biden needs to win to stay in office. But I just, again, I have a lot of pollster friends. I interview them. I talk to them. They are convinced that this method still works. These, this method has, of course, been wrong in 23 and 22. Remember the red wave midterm, wrong in 2020. So I do think national polls and even these larger presidential polls, people like to complain to pollsters. Right. We're seeing that a lot. And I'm just not convinced that we're getting an accurate sense. What do you think? I, I agree. I think what polls don't measure are the intensity about what issue is going to make you go out and vote. Right. That's what, so they'll have, here's a hierarchy of issues. The like economy is one and abortion might be three. What they're not measuring is what's going to make you leave your house right. or right. fill out the ballot. If you can mail in ballot, it's about your rights. It's what's personal. And I'll tell you this, the callers to my show on Monday, a little down because those polls. <laughs> Wednesday, it was a celebration. Yeah. It was party time. We're going to win. <laughs> Let's say, everyone's happy. And here's the reason. Since abortion would be such a driving issue, Donald Trump, pledged in the 2016 campaign to appoint justices who would overturn Roe v. Wade. The ads write themselves. You got that after Roe's overturned with Dobbs. There's Donald Trump on the CNN town hall saying, quote, I terminated Roe v. Wade yeah. and was yeah. honored to do so. He said in another interview on Newsmax, I killed Roe v. Wade right. by appointing three justices and then taking credit for the bans. Right. Those are the ads. And you know what the ad follows up with? When he's president again, he will sign an abortion ban. Right. doesn't matter what he says. We know he'll do that because that's what his base wants. He does exactly what his base wants. These are the ads that are going to run in swing state after swing state. That motivates people, women, men, young people especially, yep. come out and vote. Donald Trump is the best candidate against us while it's still scary, because if he wins, uh, I think democracy ends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was an interesting uh, a secondary thing that motivated people this time around, and it was these book bans. Moms yeah. for Liberty yeah. ran people in races that people don't care about, right? These school, school board, board races, these local races, which a lot of people don't show up to vote for. And it caused increased turnout. I spoke yeah. to a woman from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. She ran five candidates for five seats on the council. Uh, the, the school board, all five w won because she went out, uh, went after these book banners. Yeah. Like abortion, it's, it's, it's the let me make this decision mm -hmm. for my, my children. Let me make this decision with my children. I'm not handing this to the state. I'm not letting you decide that Handmaid's Tale or 1619 Project is not appropriate for my kid. Yeah, that was incredible stuff. And I would say the Moms for Liberty lost everything. Everything, One yes. race. I yeah. think they won yeah. one race in probably a very red place. Yeah. Um, look, you know, people don't like politics in their education. Yeah. They want kids to learn. And what that looks like means kids get to read books. Yeah. And the idea of going back to book bans, I mean, it's scary, and I think it really does galvanize voters. So many of these Republican issues were culture war things that people yep. weren't even that interested in that were sort of cooked up in heritage, you know, yep. heritage factories yep. of, you know, kind of things that they thought might scare people into voting. And the reality is, like, books don't make you gay. <laughs>
That's that's the point. <laughs> uh, good to see you both. I love having you here. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, All right, Dino Badella, uh, Molly Jung Fast. Molly is a special correspondent for Vanity Fair and the host of the Fast Politics podcast. Dean is a SiriusXM radio host and a columnist for the MSNBC Daily Newsletter. We'll be right back on. Mm-hmm. 